everyone this is CC cycle 2 and week 11 memory work and at home ideas I don't know how the weather is for you right now but here it is pretty cold it is freezing and um, we've got snow on the ground and our temperatures are into freezing conditions so I'm not sure that I'll be recording here in the camper for much longer however speaking of that we are making some pretty good progress here on the home front the homesteading projects and renovations and things like that. We've got a bathroom and warm showers we can take now inside the house and lots of great progress. If you've been following along on our homestead journey, thank you for being there with us. And uh, if this is something that interests you, be sure to check out our homestead fashion channel. We are documenting just the process of a family from the city moving out to starting a homestead and taking care of learning learning lots of new things on how to work the land and we were renovating a barn dominium and so there's constant projects for making it all livable and having fun along the way. This week we actually posted a video on foraging for doing a DIY Christmas wreath. So if that's something that you're interested in, decorating, foraging, and making things, then that would be a fun video to check out. And I know my husband's going to be posting in the next couple of days a video on how to prepare a Thanksgiving turkey. So lots of fun stuff coming up. Um, if you are interested in that kind of thing, just want to invite you to join us over there as we share our journey and our family would love to connect with you there. I have the link posted in the description of this video. Okay, let's get back to memory work. For math, we are skip counting the cubes. So the first thing that I do is I just introduce the cube. What is a cube? And basically it's the, a number multiplied by itself three times. And the reason why is because as you can see on this visual that we use, there's a length, a height, and a depth and so our width. So usually what we'll do is we'll use our visual because the numbers are going pretty high up into the thousands, which are pretty high, especially for my littles. Um, but it's great to have this visual. Sometimes I will use little mini foam cubes that they can hold as we're skip counting. You can also just use your fingers or have somebody come up and point to demonstrate. But this is what we use. I found this on CC Connected, I'm pretty sure. And I will try to get it linked below if it's there. If not, I will link something similar. I know there are lots of different versions of these visual aids there. All right, for English, we're moving on to our indefinite pronouns. And so we're going to be doing indefinite pronouns for the next three weeks, so 11 through 13, weeks 11 through 13. And so I found a new tune that includes all of these weeks together in one tune. And so I'm going to share that tune with you guys here, and I will link it below. It is on CC Connected, and it's so cute. My kids love Alvin and the Chipmunks, and uh, this tune is sang by the Chipmunk Elves, and it is super fun. My kids will get a kick out of this, but here is what this tune sounds like. I'm going to sing this week first, so we know the indefinite pronouns we're working on for this week, and then right after that, I'll sing the entire tune, just so that we have it here in one place, and everybody knows where we're headed with it. It is sung to the tune of One Little, Too Little, and it sounds like this. What are some indefinite pronouns? What are some indefinite pronouns? These are some indefinite pronouns. Sing along with me. All, another, any, anybody, anyone, anything, both, each, either. And the whole tune all together sounds like this. What are some indefinite pronouns? What are some indefinite pronouns? These are some indefinite pronouns. Sing along with me. All, another, any, anybody, anyone, anything, both, each, either. Everybody, everyone, everything, few, many, more, most, neither. Nobody, none, one, other, several, some, somebody, someone, such. These are the indefinite pronouns. Now you know the list. And that is the indefinite pronoun song. For history, we are learning about the French Revolution. So tell me about the French Revolution. I'll have them repeat after me a few times so that we can get down the statement and learn the song. And then what we're going to do is actually I wrote here just France on a piece of paper. You could use any a normal 8 by 11 or whatever you have that you think would be great to, to write it on. But what we're going to do as we once we get the song down and have it memorized, we're going to sing it and play it as we march around France. A couple reasons why I chose to do that. One, the tune for this song is to the tune of the, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. 
and there is a soldier beat, drum beat in that tune. And so uh, it's just the marching beat sound. And so that's why we're going to march like soldiers that uh, stormed the Bastille and fought for the Declaration of the Rights of Men. Um, at some point when we say revolution, I may have the class do a 180 and turn around because a revolution in this respect is a time of bringing about great change. And so that would be turning things around. So um, you can kind of fill it out for your group and see what would work best. But that's the basic gist of what we're going to be doing. Marching, singing, turning around. And that is history. For geography, I found a new tune this year on CC Connected by Memorize More. And I love the tune because it's very similar to the first way that we learned geography for cycle two, which includes that Kiev is in Ukraine and Moscow's in Russia. And so um, she sings it to the tune of 10 in the bed. And it sounds like this. There are five to remember in Europe and Asia. First Kiev in Ukraine then Moscow and Russia and Siberia. There are five to remember in Europe and Asia. First Kiev in Ukraine, then Moscow and Russia and Siberia. One thing that I do point out with geography for this week is that Siberia is located on the east side of the Ural Mountains and it's the most northern part of Asia. And so uh, that's one thing that I will describe as we're pointing through and tracing and noting all the different locations on the map. All right, so that's geography. Next up, we have science. Science this week is super fun. We are learning about the phases of the moon. Now, there are so many fun ideas of things that you could do to make this really exciting for the kids this week. And I'm just gonna share a few of them and you can take what you like the best <clears throat> and hopefully this just helps give some ideas. So first off, on my board, I will draw the typical uh, demonstration of the phases of the moon. So showing that the sun is shining from one direction and then showing the phases of the moon from how it would appear from our position here on Earth. So a full moon is there's no sun shining on this side of it from our perspective, although there is sun on the other side. That's why it looks like you can't see the moon. Um, then we have crescent, which is just a little bit of the moon. Then you have quarter, which is about half the moon. Gibbous is the opposite of crescent, where you have way more of the moon showing. And then you have your whole, or your full moon. And that's where you can see the whole moon. Uh, you can see the whole one side of it. And when the moon is in front of the sun, you don't see the sun shining on this side of it. So to us, it looks like there's no moon there because it's dark on this side, right? Then as the, as the um, moon moves around, and we are also rotating around the sun, uh, it shines a different, we can see a different part of the light shining on the moon, and that's what makes the different phases. So just explaining that a little bit, I'll draw that up on the board, something like that, or like that. And then for a fun project, you can do one of two things. If you happen to have this black scratch paper around, this would be a really fun thing to have them scratch out the certain, I would draw the circles first and then put the lines where they belong, but have that all drawn out and then tell them which side of the line to scratch out to represent each phase of the moon. So that's one thing you could do. Another really fun thing, if you don't have any um, food restrictions or allergies, or maybe you can do this just at home, but another really fun thing to do would be to show the phases of the moon with Oreo cookies. Uh, so the outer part of the Oreo cookie is the dark part, but then the inside, if you take it apart, you have the cream on the inside, which is perfect for making the look of the moon. And so you can, scrape scrape off and eat the inside feeling to the portions that you need that you would show for each phase of the moon and that is a really cool uh, fun way to do science this week too so uh, i will try to maybe put in a picture here if i can if not google it um, there are many different versions of this that i can i can see online where people have done this over time so that is another fun idea just an edible moon oh I almost forgot that I do have a tune for when you're doing the phases of the moon. Um, this is to a lullaby, and it is, uh, The phases of the moon are new crescent quarter gibbous and full. The phases of the moon. And as I sing that, I would point out to the different phases. So 
The phases of the moon are new crescent quarter. It is and full. The phases of the moon. Okay, so that is the tune, and those are all the ideas for science. I know that was a lot. Pick your favorite, leave some, take some, do what works for you. Okay, for timeline, we have. Norman Conquest, we're going to take our hand like this and push the other one down, representing Conquest, and Feudalism in Europe. So we're going to do the same sign that we do, which is our moving our hands up like this, just representing the different people groups during that time. Then we have the Crusades, so we're going to make a cross and we're going to push it from our heart out. Then we have Zimbabwe and early Mali in Africa. Zimbabwe actually means an enclosure or a wall of stone. So for that, we're just gonna make our hands flat. We're gonna go straight out and then close it around us like a wall around us for Zimbabwe. And then we have early Mali in Africa. So we're gonna make an M, that's three fingers over your thumb. M and then early Mali in Africa, they were known for gold. So we point to our ear and then do the sign for yellow, like we have yellow in our ear like a gold earring. And then we have Aztecs of Mesoamerica. They were known for their pyramid buildings. And so we will do the, just the outline of a pyramid. So Aztecs of Mesoamerica. And next is Francis of Assisi and Thomas Aquinas. So we're gonna make an F for Francis of Assisi and a T, that's your thumb in between your two first fingers. So T, F for Francis of Assisi, T for Thomas Aquinas, and then we have Japan's shoguns, so we're going to make the shape of Japan or, and then take out from our waist, we're going to take out like we are taking out a sword. Japan's shoguns. The last one is Incas of South America, and for that, they lived in the mountains, and so we are going to do the shape of a mountain first, and then as the music plays, we will pretend that we are climbing that mountain. And that is all of timeline. And for Latin, we have a new conjugation ending series, and this is going to be future perfect tense. And the CC song that is provided is to the tune of Happy Birthday. And so I thought it fitting to wear a birthday crown for remembering that it's Happy Birthday. And the crown tops are arrows because the first sound in this tune is arrow spelled e-r-o but sounds like a row so uh we will take out our crown and whoever is leading the class will get to wear the arrow crown the arrow birthday crown and uh we'll sing to the tune so arrow eris erit aramis eritis errant first conjugation future perfect tense arrows also remind us that when you shoot an arrow it's going to another place in the future so um we will be singing that tune to happy birthday and that is our latin future perfect tense to the tune of happy birthday all right i think that is everything for review this week we are going to have printouts some thanksgiving printouts with leaves all around it and that just say things like thankful or thankful or give thanks. I will um, put a picture in here so you can see kind of what they look like. There are lots of different printouts that you could use. This is just one of the ones that I'm going to go with for this week. And um, we're just going to let the kids color their picture and make it beautiful and wonderful. Give them some fall colors for the leaves as we review all the memory work for the last few weeks. And then for some at-home ideas this week, we've got some fun ones. We're studying the moon, so a fun read aloud would be to do the Magic Treehouse. This is uh, Midnight on the Moon. It's book number eight, so this is all about the moon. That would be a great read aloud. Definitely the Old World Echoes for week 11. And for devotions this week, if you are have the indescribable devotional, this week we have two or three. Yeah, three. 172, page 172 is all about the solar, solar system model. Uh, 62 and then page 130 is eclipsed so that's also about the moon that we're talking about in science this week too so a couple options for devotions and then for food this week um, 
I mentioned already the Oreo cookie for phases of a moon, but you could also do uh, focus on geography. And so you could do like a chocolate croissant, you could do crepes, you could do a quiche Lorraine. All those things would be related to our geography this week and fun things to eat and incorporate in our memory work. For videos, you could watch The Cat in the Hat. They have a video called Jumping on the Moon and it's season two, episode one. And then Magic School Bus also has a video all about the solar system. So you could check that one out too. And I think that is everything for week 11. Thank you so much for joining me here. If you have any questions or thoughts, comments, be sure to reach out to me in the comments. And again, if you're interested in the homesteading journey and that kind of thing, DIY projects and renovations and building and barn dominium, be sure to check out our Homestead Fashion YouTube and we'd love to connect with you there too. So have a great weekend. If you are watching this before Thanksgiving, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your loved ones and I look forward to seeing you again for week 12.